I, I'm happy for this to be circulated to officials, but the decision on tabling will have to wait, Senator Roberts, until we have a source for the document. I don't want Australian to... Bureau of Statistics. Yeah, I, I just need a link so we can verify the information. We've had issues today already with the content tabled. It can be circulated for officials to consider as part okay. of your conversation, but okay. it won't go on the website until we've had time to consider it. Sure. Okay. This is a graph of all-cause mortality in Australia over the last 10 years, with respiratory disease and COVID removed to focus on all other causes of death, graphed as a percentage of population. The source is the recently released ABS, Australian Bureau of Statistics, cause of death report, which added 2022 data. You'll also note that the COVID measures themselves in 2020 did not have a noticeable impact on deaths, meaning there was something else in play here. You can see that the, the deaths have bounced around the average, which is typical normal vari natural variation, around 0.59 per cent deaths each year. And then in 2022, shot up, clearly significant. And what's more, the provisional deaths are still not included in the 2022 deaths. According to the Bureau of Statistics in Senate Estimates last time, I think, they said that those deaths are usually 15% uh, below where they will end up once the um, coroner's investigations are, are completed. So that, that peak that you see there, clearly significant, and it's going to be higher. That's 10,000 deaths per annum, unexplained. Another five to 10,000 once the provisional deaths are, are, are changed with the autopsy, included with the autopsy. This is about half to two thirds of all casualties in World War II. If this is not caused, I'm getting to the question. Chair, if I may. Um, we transversed this, transverse this this Traverse. morning. We, yes, we, I think Senator Rennick asked similar questions this morning yeah, when you weren't in here. So I'm just not sure whether they're the same and we're going over the no, same ground. No. So I also have papers here that are available uh, online by statistician Wilson Sy, a statistical evaluation of COVID-19 injections for safety and effectiveness in the New South Wales epidemic, an Australian COVID-19 pandemic, a Bradford Hill analysis of iatrogenic excess mortality. That graph, he provides many graphs which clearly show correlation up and down with the injections, clearly. If this excess death in 2022 is not caused by the COVID injections, what the hell is the cause? Oh, so Senator Rennick, please try and keep your language parliamentary. Oh, Robert. sorry. <laughs> that, you can't blame him this time. <laughs> My apologies. This is 10,000 at the moment, 15, 20,000 probably once the coroners come in. Uh, so I'm not going to leave this estimate session without an answer to why so many people are dying all of a sudden. I'm, I'm a start, Senator. Thank you. Thank you for your question. And, and I just would point out we have we have provided multiple um, answers to these similar questions over the last few months in questions on notice. And it was actually, in fact, very relate, very closely related to questions that we uh, that came from Senator Rennick this morning. Um, but your, your, answer, your question really goes to excess deaths and the reason why we're having excess deaths in Australia uh, in, the, in the past couple of years. And I'll pass to my colleague. Um, Philip, Dr. Philip Gould for a, an explanation briefly. Yes, so, um, Senator Roberts, um, the comment that you referred to, or the statistic that you referred to around um, a 15% under-reporting of um, deaths in the ABS statistics um, is incorrect. The ABS has advised that since uh, 2022, they've actually updated the way they report. Um, on deaths. So that 15 per cent that was uh, quoted to you, I understand it was quoted to you, um, was based on a process where um, deaths which will be the coroner were not 
included in the ABS statistics in the data that you're referring to that has been that has been amended. Thank you so, for that. Thank you for that. I didn't know about that, but uh, I was going on what the ABS told me. So that, but that's, that's still a, that's still a huge spike. Clearly yes. significant. Um, but just on that point of fact, um, that 15 percent is not correct. Yeah. Okay. That's a huge spike, and no one has told us what's causing it. So, Senator, we did, we did talk about this this morning, but the the, the issue of of the, uh, that you're trying the the, the the perception you're trying to put forward is that because there was vaccination at that time and there's an excess death, that I'm not that putting not... forward a perception. All I'm saying is that that is a statistically significant, huge increase in deaths. Yeah, and we don't. I'd don't like to know the that. cause. We don't dispute that, Senator. And, and so, but just to take the point that you're you're trying to make that there there is a, some relationship between that graph that you've got there and the temporal association with vaccines. We did not uh, accept that as a premise. And what we did talk about earlier today is a, a paper that has now been published, peer-reviewed paper, which I mentioned at the last estimates, which clearly demonstrates there is no link between uh, vaccines and all-cause mortality and an extremely strong link between protection from COVID-related COVID mortality from vaccination. So going back to the, 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 the issue earlier of it being effective, um, it clearly is effective and it's not associated with this increase in mortality. But there has been an increase in mortality. We, we don't dispute that. Um, you've, you've removed respiratory mortality from this, but when you, it's an even more spectacular rise when you include that, because over the, in 2022 in particular, there was an increase in excess mortality. Very respiratory diseases have been removed because of COVID. Yes, so no, that I, we know that it's all the respiratory that. diseases that are removed. This yes. is something other than COVID. It, it, well, it may actually still be related to COVID, actually, but it's not a respiratory uh, disease if, if, we, if we take into account, particularly over this last... Uh, oh, it goes to 22. Um, you know, in, in this year, we, the, the testing for COVID has decreased, so there will be undiagnosed COVID out there in the community, uh, which may be associated with longer term uh, issues. And which tells and me is, you don't see it as a threat, otherwise, you'd still be testing. Uh, it, it is still, it's still a, a, a serious disease, and we, we know that there are some long-term effects. In many other countries in the world, we've seen an increase in cardiovascular death, for example, related to COVID. We haven't seen that as much here in Australia, um, but uh, there are many of those other other causes that um, Mr. Gould went into, Dr. Gould went into earlier, um, that, that have been potentially associated with long-term effects of COVID. Okay, let's move on, because Wilson size paper, by the way shows clear up and down, close correlation. I'm happy to give you the references to them later if you want. If